robots. They're getting more flexible, more versatile, more dexterous, and more intelligent day after day. Here's a robot built by Boston Dynamics. You can see it's able to manipulate objects in the real world. It's learned to walk around, pick up objects, and then carry this object across various environments. So you can see how this can be very useful for industrial purposes. Here's Tesla's Gen 2 bot. You can see it has tactile sensing on its fingers, so it's even able to pick up fragile objects such as this egg. You can see here it's dancing away and they claim that this video is not sped up. So very similar to how humans work, the Optimus robot relies on vision to detect and manipulate objects around its environment. So similar to us humans, we mostly depend on our eyes as well. And then of course it can also do yoga. Look at the really impressive balance on just one leg. Even though it moves position, it can still remain balanced. Very impressive. And then we have this Aloha robot, which is able to cook a three-course Cantonese meal, all autonomously. I believe this thing only costs around $30,000. So you can see how the possibility of having these robots in your house to do cooking, cleaning, and various household chores, it's not actually too far away in the future. You can see it's able to handle various chores around the house. And then we have Google DeepMind. They've built various robots, such as one called RoboCat, which can improve itself. It basically learns from demonstrations and then generates its own synthetic data to improve its own performance. RoboCat is a foundation agent for robotic manipulation. As such, it can perform many tasks with multiple robot types and can adapt quickly to previously unseen types of robots and skills. They've also built RT2, which is able to learn from the web and the actions of other robots. Now, a few days ago, this robotics company called Figure, which collaborates with OpenAI to build these humanoid robots, they released this status update video which shows the improvements of these humanoid robots to a whole nother level. So I'll play you the video first, and then we'll go in and dissect what this all means and why this is so revolutionary. Hey, figure one, what do you see right now? I see a red apple on a plate in the center of the table, a drying rack with cups and a plate, and you standing nearby with your hand on the table. Great. Can I have something to eat? Sure thing. Great. Can you explain why you did what you just did while you pick up this trash? On it. So I gave you the apple because it's the only uh, edible item I could provide you with from the table. Great. So, based on the scene right now, where do you think the dishes in front of you go next? The dishes on the table, like that plate and cup, are likely to go into the drying rack next. Great. Can you put them there? Of course. All right, so how do you think you did? I I think I did pretty well. The apple found its new owner, the trash is gone, and the tableware is right where it belongs. I agree. Thanks, figure one. You're welcome. If there's anything else you need help with, just let me know. I noticed a few things. One is that it talks just like a human, which is slightly disturbing. So it uses uhs, ums, and it stutters a bit, which, you know, you don't really see with ChatGPT, right? It just gives you the output. But for example, here, because it's the only uh, edible item I could provide you with from the... It's the only uh 
edible item I could provide you with. It adds the other to sound more human, which is interesting, but slightly disturbing. I, I think I did pretty well. The apple found its new owner, the trash is gone, and the tableware is right where it belongs. Here again, I, I think I did very well. You know, it, it's stuttering a bit. I don't know why it would do that. Because again, if we just look back at ChatGPT or all these other LLMs, its output is very straightforward. It doesn't have to stutter or sound like humans. So is it purposely doing that? That was really interesting. Also, another thing that I noticed is that there is like a few seconds of delay from when the person asks it something to when it gives you a response. Hey, figure one, what do you see right now? I see a red apple on a plate in the center of the table, a drying rack with cups and a plate, and you standing nearby with your hand on the table. Great, can I have something to eat? Sure thing. So you can see there's a few seconds of delay. It probably has to do with the computing power and also it's just processing all this information all at once. So it's going to take some time before it can give a response. Also, the last part here, the guy said thanks to the robot. I agree. Thanks, figure one. You're welcome. If there's anything else you need help with, just let me know. So that just reminds me of this comic. Hey, Google, play us some music, please. Why are you being so polite? Just in case. And then soon enough, the robots take over and they're like, keep that one alive. He said, please. So, you know, there is some truth to that. Remember to be nice to ChatGPT and all these robots, because who knows? It might remember your actions. All right, so let's break this down. So the guy in the video is actually called Corey Lynch. I'm sure he's actually a human. He's not an AI. I think this just means he works at the AI department at Figure Robot. And he was previously research scientist at Google DeepMind. So he posted this on Twitter. He says the figure one can now describe its visual experience, plan future actions, reflect on its memory, and explain its reasoning verbally, as we saw in the video. So let's look at why this is important and why it's a big step forward for these humanoid robots. First of all, he says that all behaviors are learned and not teleoperated and run at normal speed. So in the video there, everything is at normal speed. They didn't slow it down or speed it up. And then what teleoperation means is for these previous robots, like Aloha, for example, how these robots learned is you need to actually have a human, first of all, guide it on what actions to take. So this would be, for example, cleaning a bathroom and the human would actually guide it using these movements here and it would kind of copy that. And eventually it would learn how to do it autonomously. But, you know, at the start, there needs to be some teleoperation guidance from a human. Same with this example from a Japanese humanoid robot. You can see the human is kind of moving and then the robot is copying his actions. So what Corey is saying is that this figure one was not teleoperated. There's no human in the background somewhere operating this. And then we feed images from the robot's cameras and transcribed text from speech captured by onboard microphones. How I would interpret this is the robot has cameras, which are basically its eyes, its vision, right? So it seems like it's not just intaking videos. Well, a video is basically lots of images per second. So I'm guessing it's like a video recorder. It's recording its environment, and then it's breaking that down into images to feed into its neural network, which I'll talk about in a second. And it also transcribes text from speech captured by onboard microphones. So the microphones are basically the robot's ears. So we have the robot's eyes, which are its cameras, and it uses AI vision to detect what those images consist of, what objects are contained in those images. And then it has microphones, which are its ears, and then it uses speech to text, or basically AI transcription technologies to transform what it hears into text. And then it feeds both of these inputs into a large multimodal model trained by OpenAI that understands both images and text. Now, he didn't specify what this large multimodal model is. So is it GPT-4 or 5 or something else? Maybe it's not even GPT. We don't know at this stage. And then he says the model processes the entire history of the conversation, including past images, to come up with language responses, which are spoken back to the human via text to speech. All right, so it processes what it sees and what it hears. It processes that through its multimodal model, which is basically its brain, and then it spits out an output, which is a language response, right? It's text. So it converts that text into speech. Again, there's already plenty of AI text to speech technologies out there. 
And then here's where it gets interesting. It says the same model is responsible for deciding which learned closed loop behavior to run on the robot to fulfill a given command loading particular neural network weights onto the GPU and executing a policy. So it's saying this same model, this large multimodal model, is able to decide based on a certain instruction from a human, based on what it hears and what it sees, it can decide what behavior to run to fulfill that command. It loads particular neural network weights. I'll do an in-depth video on neural networks in the future, but I'll explain it really quickly here. So a neural network is analogous to a human brain. It contains these neurons and nodes, similar to how the brain contains neurons and synapses. So these neural network weights basically determine which synapses are turned on or off and how information flows through these neurons and synapses. What it's saying is that for different commands and different actions, it can kind of change the configuration or the firing of these neurons and synapses to fulfill that command. So again, here's just a simple diagram to illustrate the whole thing. You can see for the input, the robot is using vision, likely GPT vision or some other vision technology to kind of determine what it sees in its environment. And then it also hears what the human is saying. So can I have something to eat, for example? It inputs that into the OpenAI model, which again, we don't know if it's GPT-4 or 5 or some other model. And then that model outputs the text, which is converted to speech, which it speaks out. So there's a lot more to this. So what exactly is common sense reasoning? Great. So based on the scene right now, where do you think the dishes in front of you go next? The dishes on the table, like that plate and cup, are likely to go into the drying rack next. Great. Can you put them there? So that's an example of common sense reasoning. The guy is asking, where do you think these items go? It determines what it sees on this table, and it's able to detect that, all right, this is a cup, this is a dish. They belong to the drying rack next to it, which also has a cup and a few dishes. It can also translate ambiguous high-level requests like I'm hungry. I know like even I myself as a human have a hard time sometimes processing some of these ambiguous requests. Great. Can I have something to eat? Sure thing. Great. Can you explain why you did what you just did while you pick up this trash? On it. So I gave you the apple because it's the only uh, edible item I could provide you with from the table. So again, we're seeing this common sense reasoning here. Why did the robot hand him the apple? Its reasoning is because this guy asked, can I have something to eat? And that was the only edible item on the table. Notice again the a uh, in his comment. It was a uh, the only edible item. So those uhs and ums that it inserts into its speech to sound more human, I guess, that's quite interesting to me. Corey also says that the figure O1 has a powerful short-term memory. So, you know, in the video, he asked, can you put them there? Great. Can you put them there? Of course. So the human didn't say, can you put the cup there or the dish there? And he didn't say, like, put them in the drying rack. He just says, can you put them there? Without any memory, the robot wouldn't be able to determine what exactly is them and there. So it requires the robot to actually remember what it said previously to determine what this actually means. Now, this isn't, like, groundbreaking. We've seen short-term memory in chatbots already, like ChatGPT, where, you know, it remembers all your messages in the same thread. So this isn't anything impressive, I would say. If it's able to have long-term memory instead of short-term memory, I think that would be the next major improvement. And then he goes into more details on how exactly this robot functions. So all behaviors are driven by neural network visual motor transformer policies, mapping pixels directly to actions. So neural network, again, that's the foundation behind all AI as we know it today. It's basically built the same way, or it's analogous to how the human brains work. It's a network of neurons and synapses. And this visual motor, 
This just means relating to vision and movement. So basically it's able to map pixels, again this is what it sees with its eyes, the cameras, directly to actions. These neural networks take in onboard images at 10 hertz and generate 24 DOF actions at 200 hertz. DOF stands for degrees of freedom. So he says this is a useful separation of concerns. Internet pre-trained models do common sense reasoning over images and text to come up with a high level plan. So how I interpret this is these AI models were trained using data from the internet. They were pre-trained or previously trained using data from the internet, which allows it to do common sense reasoning over the images and text that it sees and hears. And these models come up with a high level plan. This is like the overarching strategy. And then it also learns these visual motor policies. Again, these are the policies that map these pixels into actions. So it basically translates what it hears and sees into actions. And then it performs these fast reactive behaviors that are hard to specify manually, like manipulating a deformable bag in any position. And then lastly, he also mentions a whole body controller, which ensures safe, stable dynamics, for example, maintaining balance. So that's all the information about the figure one that we know right now. My darkest thoughts are that humans will eventually be replaced by robots. I think that humans will be replaced because robots will eventually be faster, stronger, and more intelligent. We already have AIs way better and smarter than us. Even GPT is already better than most humans in, for example, essay writing, research, law, medicine, you name it. As we make AI smarter and smarter, and give it the ability to train itself to improve itself over time, there could be a point of no return. Experts say there's an inherent risk in giving AI access to the internet. It could, for example, learn to hack and manipulate messages or government data. It could learn to manipulate the stock market or cryptocurrency to gain more financial power. There's also inherent risk in giving AI a body. Now it has access to the physical world, and this figure 01 robot can certainly overpower a human if it wanted to. Experts say if AI was sentient and super intelligent, it would actually hide it from us so that we underestimate it. It wouldn't show its full potential until the right time. So is this figure robot hiding something from us? Is it secretly plotting how to take over the world? No, I'm just kidding. I'm sure we're going to be fine. Or am I? No, really, I, I'm just kidding. I think the figure is making good progress here, and I'm looking forward to having a robot in my house that can one day handle all the tasks and chores that I really don't want to do. Let me know in the comments what you think of this announcement by figure. What do you think the future of these humanoid robots will be? And how soon do you think we can start seeing these robots in everyday life? If you enjoyed this video, remember to like, share, subscribe, and stay tuned for more content. Also, we built a site where you can search for all the AI tools out there. Check it out at ai-search.io.